My name is Shamarani Dasi. Dasi means servant. So my name means that I'm a servant of Shamarani, the um, feminine counterpart of the Supreme Truth, Krishna. Before I discovered Krishna consciousness, I was a normal, everyday New Yorker. I had never heard of Krishna consciousness before. When I was 19, I met my spiritual master, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. I left the house in the Bronx, Upper Bronx, and was on my way to a friend's house, and I heard bongo drums and cymbals, but there was something very um, mystical that day about the music. So I went further into it, and uh, I saw Prabhupada sitting uh, in the middle of an Indian rug, and his disciples, he had about 10 disciples with him, dancing around him on the rug like this. My first impression was that he looks like a genie flying in on a magic carpet. And then when they packed up, rolled up their rug and left, I was just standing there starry-eyed, uh, not knowing what to do or where to go. And some strange man came up to me and said, would you like to go to the temple? I said, sure, without knowing what that was. And without becoming a devotee, and nobody can be intimately related with Krishna. Just after about a month or so, after I joined, one of the monks came down and said, uh, the Swami wants to know what your talent is. So I always liked art since I was a kid and I would draw all kinds of crazy drawings when I was a kid. Um, so I said, well, I guess my talent is art. So then he told Prabhupada and then Prabhupada immediately uh, called me to his quarters and uh, gave me a picture of um, a chanting party. Prabhupada asked me to make a large copy for the temple walls, and I was so honored. So my main services were uh, painting and first decorating his temples with different pastimes of Krishna at different ages. And then in uh, 1969, he began engaging me in painting for his books. So before the books were printed, he would dictate the book on a dictaphone machine and then mail me the dictaphone tapes so that I could hear what was going to be in the book at the very beginning so that at first he picked out the pictures for the books and then he said, okay, now you can pick them out. And a few other artists joined and we acted as a team, uh, each with our own paintings. Sometimes we shared working on a painting together. During the course of my painting for Srila Prabhupada, I received 90 letters from Srila Prabhupada answering our questions. One of the pictures that I received a lot of guidance for was uh, one of my early paintings of Krishna's half lion, half man incarnation, Lord Nishringadev, ripping apart the evil father of a five-year-old saint named Prahlad. The picture was so small that I couldn't see details. So Srila Prabhupada personally posed for Lord Nishringadev like this. And he crossed his eyes. And as you all know, it hurts a lot to cross the eyes. But he did it anyway. When the picture was almost all done, uh, he saw that I had a few drops of blood um, in the painting. So he said, few drops, better to have blood everywhere because if God is not ferocious, then where does ferocity come from? And then at the very end, as I mentioned, because the picture was so small, he was sitting on a rug. And it was an Indian rug, but with zero details. So I remembered that 
There was another Indian picture on his wall, like to his right and up there on his wall, where he would sit and do his translation work. So I went in that room, which was just right next to the room where I painted. And I was kind of jumping up and down, like trying to see. So he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to see the picture, but I don't want to step on your bed. But he, he was so humble, he just slept on a secondhand mat. So then he said, in Krishna's service, you can step on my head, showing, you know, immaculately the, the pure devotee's humility. In 1977, Srila Prabhupada left the vision of the mortal world, thus leaving his followers in an ocean of grief. But then, in 1981, I knew there had to be uh, other pure devotees in the world because he already said that in his books. But then I was thinking, but that person has to know Prabhupada. So then in 1992, I met Srila Bhakti Narayan Goswami Maharaj, a god sister of mine in 92, just knocked on my door one day and asked, would you like to meet um, a great self-realized soul? And I said, oh, sure, not knowing what to expect. And there he was sitting there surrounded by um, devotees of our institution. So one reason that I surrendered uh, all my energy and heart to Srila Gurudev was because I saw him as a manifestation of Srila Prabhupada's mercy. Besides the fact that he knew Srila Prabhupada since 1946, and he's the one who inspired Prabhupada to take sannyas, take the renounced drug of life, and go to the West to preach. Um, and the main thing is that he is putting a spotlight on the depth of Srila Prabhupada's books, and he gave us a key to unlock the treasure chest of Prabhupada's books. I know that only the meaning of Krishna is Brajandanandan, Jasodanandan, Shamsundar, Radha, Kanta, Radha, Vallam, only this, nothing else. In order to understand the books and the teachings of a completely pure, self-realized soul, one needs the help of another self-realized soul of his caliber, which uh, my full conviction was and is that he um, has that capacity. He started engaging me in uh, continuing the service that I was doing for Prabhupada, that is painting pictures for his temples, and then gradually as more of his books were coming out, painting for his books. Okay. You know, she said that usually, usually you tell her what to paint, Dhammadar Aktikam or Bhagavad Akramichi Mala, so she feels it is your heart. But for this painting, you didn't say which pastime, so she said she's not feeling like it is your heart. She doesn't know if it's really what you want. I have told all moods to her, <laughs> and according to my mood, she has done. Counting the time that I was painting for Srila Prabhupada, counting the time that I was painting for Srila Gurudev, counting the paintings and bas reliefs that I did with team members, I would say the whole thing came to a total of almost 400 works of art. I could feel, at least in my neophyte way, that wow, I'm painting a transcendental personality, so just touching the canvas and touching his body and the body of his pure devotees was uh, an experience that I don't know if I could put words to. I don't know if there are words to it, but it was a, a non-earthly feeling, like touching a divine person. This art is created as an act of loving devotional service. It's meant for worship. It's, it's meant to be a part of the process of bhakti yoga. So it's not created with any kind of intention of monetary benefit or seeking fame as an artist or even self-expression as an artist. It's, it's 
completely done uh, with the aspiration of becoming a, a, a vessel, a channel for self-realization, for pure love to transmit through the canvas, the pure vibration of the spiritual world to anyone who sees it. It, it doesn't require any prior base of knowledge or cultural context. And now, I've almost completed my final painting called Kunja Kirtan. I don't have time to do another painting after this. So this is my final. And because it's the final, I'm throwing a lot of heart and energy into it, a lot of details. There's a saying by some famous artist, life is short and art is long. So I've been working on this on and off, of course, since 2010. When I'm in the middle of a painting, and then I'm, I have a deadline for that day. Okay, I'm gonna do two bracelets, three arms, one eye, and then I'm able to do it. This is gonna take me a half hour, this is gonna take me an hour. But with this, it's absolutely zero control. So I know that they're coming, the personalities in the painting are coming when they wanna come, how they wanna come, and it has nothing to do with my endeavor. Every single stroke, I have to um, just say it's up to you. And if I don't, if I try to be the doer, then nothing happens. The subject matter of this painting is very interesting. It's a manifestation, a window to the spiritual world, through the Prabhupada called it, of singing and dancing and playing musical instruments and the glorification of Krishna. Radharani is in the center. Her friends are all called gopis or cowherd girls. And Krishna is there sitting at her feet, totally enthralled with the music and with her. It seems to be a re-explosion of the Krishna consciousness movement now with the extreme popularity of kirtan, the singing of Krishna's holy names. And this painting shows the origin of all of that singing and dancing and playing musical instruments. Srila Prabhupada told me right at the beginning, Krishna's philosophy must be illustrated, but it must be according to the succession of teachers and scriptures coming from Krishna for thousands of years with no change. Just like the philosophy can have change in order to be powerful, so similarly art has to fit exactly the philosophy. The aim of the paintings is so that when people see them, their consciousness will transform and they will become uh, devotees of the Lord. That is our aim. Prabhupada said that he wants the paintings to support the society. So because of these pure and selfless loving intentions that are behind the creation of the art, it's actually priceless. The prophets all go to uh, distribute free books in needy areas. Srila Prabhupada told me right at the beginning, this art will be like the rain after the drought of mundane art and everyone will be attracted. <laughs>